Uh, Mount Dungeons and Comics DC Weekly News. Um, mm. Not a lot this week. Uh, but first, we'll hit you with a uh, sponsor. You sell comics.com, your new multi vendor marketplace. You sell comics offers a site exclusively for buying and selling of all things comics, slabs, omnis, trades, and more. Sell for as low as 5% commission or zero commission monthly tiers. Run your own auctions, unlimited bin listings. You sell comics.com. Buy, collect, sell. Okay, um, the Roadhouse remake is out today, I think, on Amazon Prime. Mm-hmm. So Jake Gyllenhaal was doing the uh, junket interview rounds, and uh, someone asked him about Batman. Um, yeah. Uh, James Gunn is positioning Superman, though fans remain keen to see who the DC Studios cast as DC's Batman. The Brave and the Bold is somewhere on the horizon. With the Flash's Andy Muschietti uh, attached to direct, but with the Batman 2 shifting to 2026... Who knows when we'll see it. Uh, the common sense approach would arguably have been either to find a way to bring Robert Pattinson's Batman to the DCU, or just leave that movie as standalone, a feature similar to how Joker was originally conceived, and start fresh. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, though, we'll see. We'll soon have two different actors sharing the role of Bruce Wayne in theaters. Will that confuse moviegoers? It's hard to... Th- I don't... Th- I think it's probably pretty easy to say it will confuse moviegoers. Uh, but in an interview with Screen Rant, Roadhouse star Jake Gyllenhaal has, was asked if he'd be interested in playing Batman after the site compared his role in the upcoming Prime Video title to The Dark Knight. Mm. Quote, Oh man, that's a classic. It's an honor. Speaking of playing roles that other incredible actors have played in the past, to me actually roles that other incredible actors have played in the past, which to me actually I think when I think about it... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to play Iago and Othello with Denzel Washington. I think about like the history of actors that have played that role through a time, and I am intimidated by that. Uh, so that's the first level. That's what I'm working on right now. But of course, it would be an honor always. Those types of those types of things and those roles are classic. Some time ago, the Dark Knight writer David S. Square revealed that he advocated for Gyllenhaal to play the title character in Batman Begins. I mean, Gyllenhaal is amazing. Christian Bale's amazing. So who knows what? Uh, the actor came close to replacing Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man Two after he injured his back working on Sea Biscuit. And right. la- I didn't know that. Did you know that? Yeah, oh. that was when that was. So that's the start of Toby's like wind down from Hollywood, right? Because he didn't do a lot of like you know um, action movies, commanding roles. Yeah. Uh, after that, because he really did fuck his back. Like, mm-hmm. I guess it was really bad. Like, the fact, uh, he, like him trying to do Spider Man 3, I guess, was tough. agony. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I think after that, if you really think about it, how many action movies slash, like, physically demanding movies did he really do, right? Like, he had I don't that think one he did movie. Any after that. Yeah. Till... He did that one movie where he was the soldier. No, no. I forget. I don't know why I'm spacing. Um,. S- coming back from war there was that one um you know it was great gatsby i forget when that came out it was like the middle of well he did that with his his boy leo they had that whole crew of what was it called the pussy yeah. crew or something oh my god I, I don't know but um uh yeah so yeah that was i believe if i'm not mistaken that was like the start of it so. anytime imdb you want to load fucking page yeah thanks But yeah, that's uh, that was when they, uh, they said anyway. Oh, well, it's not Tobias Menzies. Toby Maguire. Load. There we go. Okay. Uh, it helps when you yell at it. <sighs> always works. Okay, so Spider-Man 3. Oh, he did. He was in Tropic Thunder, uncredited? Okay. Uh, Brothers was that uh, war movie. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 2009. Yeah, he doesn't took a break between Pawn Sacrifice and Boss Baby. Um, Boss Baby. Yeah, so he basically did one, he did a voiceover for seven seven years. One voiceover. He did Pawn Sacrifice, he played Bobby Fischer. Spider-Man money was real good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he's getting residuals too, right? I mean, the Pleasantville money has got to be great, too. <laughs> uh, set out rules. Uh, I remember yeah. we watched that in elementary school as part of, like, the learning. Pleasantville? 
Yeah. Oh yeah. Because of because of like the message it had about equality, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you're being indoctrinated with socialism. Um, okay, yeah. so would Jake Gyllenhaal be a good choice for Batman? I feel like he's yeah. kind of older at this point. Like, unless they're. I mean, they wanted Superman to be younger, according to James yeah. Gunn. Do they also want Batman to be starting out at the same age? Because if they do, then he's not a good choice. I would have to agree. But if they kind of want, like, a uh, Batman's already been Batman for 20 years, and now this new threat has shown up of Superman. Well, mm -hmm. new, new guy. I mean, he initially thinks he's a threat, but... Um, then maybe you can do it. How old is Jake Gyllenhaal at this point? He was in his early 40s. 43. So by the time he'd be done playing Batman, you think 10 years? Because his initial plan was 10 years, right? For DCU. Be 53. Mm, yeah, he, maybe. It's a possibility. But yeah, it's it. a possibility. Okay, James Gunn tells, shares disappointing update on Superman costume reveal. Uh, Superman writer James Gunn gave the reason by not gave the reason behind it not revealing the costume for the Man of Steel's new cinematic outing, mm -hmm. as a response to a fan on Threads asking why he isn't revealing said costume. The filmmaker professed because the movie doesn't come out for over a year. Before this, not only did Gunn sh share the first official photo of the project that featured the S emblem, to reach recently, which he secretly revealed almost a year ago. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, Pierre Stafford's wife, Natalia, hinted that fans would get a complete look at the suit soon enough. Um, I'm fine with him keeping it under wraps. Like, I feel like we get way too much early, and then you have to wait so long anyway, so... And thing, I mean, not that the suit's going to change, I hope, between now and then, but things change. Like, it's still a year away from coming out. Mm -hmm. Things change while they're shooting, I don't know. Just, just wait. Uh, not really yes. DC news, but James Gunn news, so I'll clear it in here. Uh, Brightburn sequel gets disappointing update. Uh, don't count on seeing Brightburn 2 anytime soon, released in 2019. <laughs> Brightburn is a horror film that imagines a young boy with superhuman abilities and his powers with sinister intentions. James Gunn serves as producer on the film. It's written by, by brother Brian Gunn and cousin Mark Gunn. Man, he loves to hire his, uh, his family, eh? Nepotism. Uh, five years later, a fan of the film was asked Jan James Gunn on threads if Brightburn sequel will happen. Given that so many unanswered questions are remain, unfortunately, Gunn's response stated no plans at all for this right now. Uh, notably, Gunn didn't say that Brightburn 2 would never happen, but it's not on the board at this time. At least that would suggest a potential sequel it won't be happening anytime in the near future. In any case, it's much less enthusiastic response than when Gunn previously teased about the project in months after its initial release in 2019. At the time, he said he was too busy with Suicide Squad and Guardians of the Galaxy 3 to focus on Brightburn 2. Of course, now that Gunn's plate is even more full with the DCU, it makes sense why the Brightburn sequel has been pushed aside on his list of priorities. Uh, Brightburn Star wanted to return for a sequel. Uh, I know there's definitely some buzz of better in the media, but I don't know any more than the average person, uh, but I'd love to be a part of it. Uh, Brightburn Star Jackson Dunn also said of his hopes for a sequel to happen at per screen right back in 2019. Um, have we... I don't know, I might be out of loop, but have we ever seen this kid again in something else? Did he go on to be, like, work a lot? Not that I know of, but I could be wrong. <clears throat> Uh, no, he hasn't. He's been in Vegas High and When the Bell Rings. This is a short. He has an upcoming Man in the Long Black Coat post production. Um, oh, he's in Avengers Endgame as Scott Lang. Mm. Okay, as a twelve-year-old Scott Lang. Oh, when they're go when they're doing the the time yes. travel thing and they keeps and they pops him out as an old man and a baby. Um. Yeah. Actually, he worked quite a bit before that. I wonder if he took mm. time off for college or something. How old is he? 2003. Oh, maybe not college. Maybe probably. Oh, maybe college. Yeah, it'd be 20 going into 20. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe he took time off for college. Or he could go do theater. Like, theater doesn't show up in here, and a lot of actors have, like, breaks in there. And I'm like, wow, they did nothing for, like, four years. It's because they were yeah. on, on stage. I would be surprised. Yeah. I would like to see a Brightburn sequel, though. That movie was fun. Yeah, it was fun. It wasn't... Like very, you know, super riveting, but it was good. Yeah, I was. I recall it being short too. It was a, a quick 
fun. There was a couple. Movie. There was a couple of times where it was like the script was pretty, like tough. Like there, I remember something. I think the dad like took a swing at the kid or something, or like tried to run. Roy from the office. Oh yeah. Then <laughs> he got split from yeah. his neck. That was great. All oh, right. Uh, yeah. So Brightburn sequel not uh, uh, coming anytime soon. No. Okay, uh, that's kind of DC News of the Week. Thanks, 